No bells and whistles tonight here on Alex Garrett Podcasting. Just me off the cuff uh, with some thoughts not even written down. Uh, Alex G in NYC is my Twitter and my Facebook. Uh, as we are seeing again protests after the officers of the Breonna Taylor uh, death, uh, killing, some would say, uh, there are protests because these officers did not get any charges. In fact, the AG of Kentucky also said the, the way they approached the situation was proper. So whatever you may say of that, that was the fact of what he said. And, you know, I, I hope our city is okay tonight. I hope we don't see any boarded up businesses once again. I hope the protests stay peaceful and not riotous. Um, but if they do turn chaotic... I'm sure Mayor de Blasio won't see any of it. I think it's ridiculous. I saw peace, tranquility. I saw people going about their business, people excited that it's the first day of school. I saw anything but anarchy. And I hope we do see anything but anarchy tonight, but we'll have to find out in the morning. Did you also know two cars, separate incidents, one in Little Italy crashing, uh, careening around, and one in a T-Mobile spot in Chelsea crashing. Strange, strange happenings indeed in the city. Um, He's partially right. There isn't extreme anarchy in the city. And I also believe President Trump pulling this card, uh, you know, saying he wants to, is is also helping the left say, well, guess what? He's defunding police. Because as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, FEMA's already been dis pulling funding from the disinfecting of the subways and the schools and all that. Now you add this, which is disinfecting, uh, which is defunding the police. Yeah, that's a left talking point now. And it's a shame because I think Trump really could have capitalized on that as two Louisville protesters, uh, Louisville cops tonight shot by protesters in, in their clashes of violence. Um, But I think here in New York, Trump hurt himself by claiming we are an anarchist division. And so Mayor de Blasio is partially right. He's also ignoring that, yeah, there are shootings going on, that there are skyrocketing numbers that we've never seen before. But the number one thing he did not mention yet, I, I don't know, is actually the peaceful nature which these parks, Cunningham, Prospect, the big city parks, maybe Van Cortland as well, I haven't been up there yet, are seeing community relations work perfectly. Labor Day, Prospect Park, an NYPD vehicle parked in a predominantly African-American area and in a park in that area, Prospect Park, coexisting being in the community. And nobody was actually torching an NYPD car that day. See, what Mayor de Blasio is missing when he says this... I think it's ridiculous. I saw peace, tranquility. I saw people going about their business, people excited that it's the first day of school. When he says all that, I I want him to honestly tell us that there is no anarchy between the cops and the people of New York City. I would love for him to tell us that, to say, hey, here's a community that's really together in this fight against violence, actually, and really in protection and for protection. See, Mayor de Blasio doesn't talk about the good community relations. He only discusses the bad ones, and I believe that is a fact. And on this podcast, we also must talk about the good that I and others see. The good it feels when the community and the cops are in unison in defending the neighborhood firstly and in just being. And even in Washington Square Park that Labor Day weekend, cops were there, people were there. You know, NYU had a shut down and, and dole out violations um, because of the COVID violations that these NYU students did, but the cops didn't stop it. They were there protecting, 
and making sure nothing got out of hand. But nothing got out of hand. The cops didn't make anything get out of hand. The people didn't make anything get out of hand. So can we stop it with this idea that every place around New York and every place across the country has terrible community relations? Because it's not true. And I've seen it multiple times. And I'm sure you have too. But because you feel like you have to defend a certain position, you don't want to say that community relations are actually healthy. Because that would be ridiculous. I think it's... Right? That would be ridiculous to actually imagine a community relations-based connection with the police and Prospect Park and Cunningham Park and other community parks. It's beyond anybody's imagination, actually, that they can go exist at this point. No one could think that there's a possibility because they're, it's hit into their head that they only listen to one side that says, police are bad, police are this, police have this going on against them, police do this against people. Really? Well, you tell me how unpeaceful it was when the police literally had to watch the federal buildings become vandalized. God, thank you for not having them, for stopping them from burning it down. I feared that was going to happen in New York. But these cops had to watch it be vandalized. They couldn't do anything. They had to watch the autonomous zone take place, be built, be lived in for months, and not do anything except, quote-unquote, stand guard and protect the best they could. But they couldn't do anything if there was reaction against them. And I've said time and time again, what's the point in yelling at good cops who are just staying there protecting buildings? What's the point in that? Honestly. But see, there are very few open-minded people that would actually want to see another side where, yes, there is no anarchy in community relations. So while de Blasio doesn't see anarchy where he was, he must also now say, you know what, I don't see anarchy between the cops and the community. I do not see revolts against the cops. I see, and I don't see the cops revolting against the people. See, they will tell us over and over how bad it was that cops pepper sprayed at a, you know, the quote-unquote call of Bill Barr and President Trump down D.C. But they will never say how peaceful relations actually are in New York because, sadly, it would hurt their anti-cop agenda. Remember, uh, Joe Biden said this. This is about protecting neighborhoods, protecting people, everybody across the board. So the only guy that actually put in a bill to actually defund the police is Donald Trump. But again, here's a man who doesn't say how honestly, truly protective it is, because every time he gets a chance, he sort of says the opposite in these crucial moments where a leader that people want to see should be saying, hey, not all cops not all cops are like this, or not all people in blue that wear the badge are like this. But we will never hear it. We will never hear that there is actually peace amongst the community and police that I've seen with my own eyes. And why? Because they want to drive home the point to drive home chaos on our streets. That is, I, I feel that sometimes. I feel they don't say certain things because they know it would actually calm everything down. Mayor Bill and others are right. There is no quote-unquote anarchy that we see on a daily basis in New York. But they must now also shout out the non-anarchy that exists between the people and the cops that we see every day. The actual Coexistence, the cohabitants, the. If, even if they don't like them, they don't go after them. And I don't really see cops starting trouble either in New York City. Do you? Be honest. Do you see that happening? Is it a pandemic of that too? No. And so. I appreciate that people can say not all of New York is anarchist. I would like them to say that we needed more funding, but at least we could say 
that not all of New York is anarchist. And to say it so is just not right. But then to also not say anarchy doesn't isn't existing in the community between cops and police, that'd be a huge next step. And I'm kind of repeating myself because I, I'm afraid to say my next point. I'm not afraid. I just don't know how well received it's going to be. But let's be honest. How did we go from a all lives matter, let's lock down part of the year and cheer people saving lives, the healthcare heroes, the first responders, the cops, the firefighters, EMS, ambulances that were actually blocked by protesters, believe it or not. Tell me how that first half of the year we wanted lives matter. But then all of a sudden when those who said all lives matter after the tragic incident with the death of George Floyd. How is it we just became saying that was a racist thing to say? I will never understand it. You can try and comment every which way you want. But I will never truly understand it. Because we literally went from saying how great it is to say all lives matter to saying to being shouted down. Ordinary people being shouted down from saying all lives matter. In, an, in, in, in a nanosecond. Because, of course, black lives matter. We all know that by now, don't we? Ordinary people know that. But when you say that nowadays, it does sound a bit anti-law enforcement. A lot anti-law enforcement, actually. Because when you start associating black lives matter with cops as pigs, then you do become anti-law enforcement. You do become picking and choosing exactly what lives matter. And I believe there are good people that say it, that mean it. I believe in the slogan. I, I don't believe in the organizers of the movement, that their intentions are best. Because if they could, they could bring anarchy tomorrow, today, tomorrow, whatever. And they did. And they do. You know, they have the peaceful protest and about 12 o'clock at night, things get really bad. And of course, we should be against the mastectomies and other things that seemingly are going on at the border with ICE. I don't even know how that's not getting more coverage. It's horrible. If all lives matter, yes, those women at the border who are being detained, by the way, should be not treated or harmed in that way. And I'm going to say that here and everywhere. How is that even right to just not talk about? So I applaud those protesting that and getting arrested for it. Yes, I applaud that protest. I applaud people who peacefully protest and actually do get arrested for causing what John Lewis would call good trouble. It's the bad trouble that should now be condemned. See, people want us all to condemn and to say Black Lives Matter. But the minute you put them on the hot seat to condemn the violent wing, the militant wing, and amazingly, of the 5% of violence, apparently 80% is tied to BLM. That's crazy. But if you're not going to call out the militant wing, then your argument for BLM doesn't hold water. Again, unity doesn't mean unifying against one side. It's calling out the slain cops, the slain kids that have been killed because of this. The, some of these protests have gotten out of hand. That's unity. When you can condemn the violent wing of BLM, you are being unified. Until then, you're just using that term and you're just saying all lives matter don't work because you want to... And it seems divisive when you say it and not defend the fact that... or not condemn the fact that violence is happening in the very precious organization you want to protect. You could throw a number at me, 95% all you want. But if you expect people on the right, people in the middle to condemn white supremacists, white nationalists, which we all must, 
for their violent role in this, we must also ask you, why aren't you accepting and condemning the fact that your party, your, your movement, that movement is flawed, does have a militant win, wing? Just accept it and we can all move forward from there. If we just accept it as a society that there is violence within the BLM, I think people would be able to get through this conversation better. But until there's that acceptance, you will see people say BLM is divisive. You will see people clap back when they're told they're racist for saying all lives matter. Because we know that. We call out the police brutality. Now all we're asking is for those who really believe in the movement to say, you know what, you're right. That movement does have a militant wing. That must be eradicated. By arrests, by getting by by jail time, by not just saying, well, guess what? They're back in a new another city. Unacceptable. Lock them up. Lock, lock that militant wing up just as much as you want to lock up the militant wing of the white nationalists, the white supremacists. Then we'll all be able to move along. And I think here in New York, people will be much more at ease if de Blasio simply said, you know what, there's also not anarchy with the cops and the community right now. They are existing well. That Arner Garner incident is not every policeman on the force. Those that shove peaceful protesters in New York, those are not all members of the force. Because believe it or not, there are good people. That's what he should say. And I'm afraid he never will. I'm also afraid he'll believe even these riots that might go down in the name of protecting the name of Breonna Taylor, he might actually say, guess what? I think it's ridiculous. I saw peace, tranquility. I saw people going to... He might actually say, it's ridiculous to say they're rioting. And he would say, it's peaceful. That's the lengths he's going to try and get votes from a base that doesn't even want him. Let's be honest about that. That doesn't even want him. Okay, if they wanted him, he would have been in the campaign montage for the 2020 DNC. If they wanted him, he would have been highly attended at the Iowa diners and other places like that. They didn't want him. And now he just come home and fought whatever fight he's fighting for right now. And on a humorous note, you have to check out my Alex G in NYC because... You know the movie Twins, Danny, I, uh, Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger? Well, I put up a side-by-side with Mayor de Blasio. I'm about 4'11". He's six foot something. And just could imagine the remake of Twins starring Alex G at NYC and NYC Mayor Bill de Blasio. I would pay to see it. I would pay to make it. I think that'd be hilarious. Considering actually when you're right next to him, he's actually talking to you and he's friendly to talk to and he's... He's actually different than what you see in the papers. But I do hold him a little bit accountable when I talk to him. And I would just love to to do a document, a remake of Twins with Mayor Bill. We got to have a laugh. This is such a dark time. I want to find laughter in everything. We need to. Because they say laughter is the best medicine. And I agree with that. Wouldn't you? One more thought behind the smiles and the humor. This journey, I'm taking it serious, and I'm very humbled that you have listened to this podcast nearly 20,000 times. I don't know who will be the 20,000th download, but when it gets there, we're throwing a party, we're going to go outdoor dining, maybe not, I don't know, but it would be nice to celebrate with you guys when we do hit 20,000. It's coming, baby! It's coming! I'm Alan Garrett. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.